Well, we're still on the ferry boat Vallejo, my home. And as it happens to be a rather nice afternoon, we decided to come out onto the patio instead of working in the studio. I've been talking to you about the mystery of the curious sensation of nothingness that lies behind ourselves. First of all, I gave you the illustration of the blank space behind the eyes about the silence out of which all sound comes, and about empty space out of which all the stars are, appear. And you'll remember that in the last talk, I likened this curious emptiness behind anything, behind everything, to God, an imageless, non-idolatrous God of which we can have no, uh, no conception at all. And I've also pointed out that basically, when you really get down to it, that emptiness is yourself. Now, it sounds very odd in our civilization to say, therefore, I am God, or for that matter, you are God. But you will remember, of course, that this exactly is what Jesus Christ felt. And he was crucified for it because in his culture, God was conceived as the royal monarch of the universe. And therefore, anybody who gets up and says, well, I am God, is blasphemous. He's subversive. He's claiming to be, if not the boss himself, at least the boss's son. And that's a put down for everybody else. But Jesus had to say it that way because in his culture, they did not have, as the Hindus have, the idea that everybody, not only human beings, but animals and plants, all sentient beings whatsoever, are God in disguise. Now let me try to explain this a little more clearly. Because I cannot help thinking of myself as identical with, continuous with, one with, the whole energy that expresses itself as this universe. If the universe is made of stars, a star is a center from which energy flows. In other words, there's the middle and all the rays come out from it. And so I feel that as the image of the whole thing that all energy is a center from which rays come out. And therefore, each one of us is an expression of what is basically the whole thing. 